Hello everyone, today we are going to go over C++ input validations. We are going to talk about sin fail, while sin, and using strings as inputs and verifying that the string is valid string or character. So say you're taking in a yes, someone types out yes or no as an answer, and you can make sure that you get a, a match. Um, so we'll start with sin fail. Uh, let's uh, ask for a number from the user. See, uh, enter a, an integer. Okay. So let's declare our number. Ask or take in the number from the user. Okay, so if sin fail, we want something to happen. We want an error message. See out error uh, number. Input is not an integer. Input is not an integer. Exclamation, it's yell. Okay. And line. Okay. So, else, if it doesn't fail, we will just output their number. So, C out. This is your number. And output number. Okay, let's see what happens. Return integer 500. All right, this is your number. Let's run that again. Now let's see what happens when we put in a letter. Input is not an integer. So if we do that with a, let's see, the number is 13. So it'll take the number in the beginning, but it won't take the letter. So let's see if we put a letter in between, it cancels. As soon as this letter hits, it stops reading into CN. So that's one way of making sure if you if you run the program and you start it out with the letter, then that's when you get the merit the error message. Okay. So uh, let's see. So yeah, we can do that and it'll just show the first it'll show the integers up until the up until the sin fail. So now let's do while sin. So while sin is similar to what we just did here. It's almost exactly the same. So let's uh, let's uh, we're gonna keep this part. Actually, we're gonna go up to here. Delete this, and then here we can do while sin number um, C out your number is Okay. Manager. Numbers thirty. Numbers thirty. One forty three. Fifteen. Twenty. Eleven. Okay, so if we do a letter, program ends. So that's an example 
of uh, a while sin input and if you enter a letter instead of a number then this stops taking in numbers. If we don't get in a number then we can as soon as we exit this while loop um, we can just have a goodbye message. Let's see, 20, 25, 30, H, goodbye. So as soon as we enter H, it leaves this while loop and it prints this. Um, so you could also, you could put an if statement here. Um, you can do a total, running total. Um, so from here, we can do, uh, let's make a total number here, int total equals zero. So we can do total plus equals number, which will add the number. And then we can print out the total, see out. Your total is total. So twenty five, thirty, sixty, fifteen, eleven, and then to exit, total is one forty one. So that will add up all of our inputs. Okay, so let's do uh, another example uh, string input. So we'll ver verify um, that we're getting a string or we're getting like a yes or no. Um, so let's delete up until here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so Let's say enter y for yes and for no. So we need to declare our string, or I guess you could use a character as well. Uh, string. So we're declaring our string here. So we take in the answer from the user, C in. Okay, so we can do an error message. If we don't get a yes, if we don't get a Y or an N, print out error message. So if answer is not equal to y and the answer is not equal to n the reason we need an and and not an or statement is because if it reads the or statement as soon as it sees that the answer is not y then it doesn't have to read the second, it doesn't have to read past the or statement. It's like if it's if this part is true, then it just executes the if loop or the yeah, the if statement. So it needs to either be not y or not n. Um, we can put uh, see out invalid answer. Okay, else, okay, let's say uh, C out, do you answered an 
let's see. Okay. Let's see what happens when we run this. Enter Y for yes. Let's do a V. Invalid answer. You answered B. Let's uh, do it again. So it'll print out the end. It'll print it out. It'll print out. Print out the answer no matter what. So N, lowercase N, because we're just looking for capital capital letters here. So if we do a capital Y or a capital N, we shouldn't get the error message. Capital Y. You answered Y. Do it again. Capital N. You answered N. Anything that isn't capital Y or can capital N will get the error message and it'll print out the answer or print out your original answer. Okay. So you can kind of see how useful this would be. Um, so situation like this, I would probably ask for the answer again. Let's copy this this way. Okay, enter another answer. Enter another answer. So we can ask for the answer again. And we can change this to a while statement. So now we won't get this message until we leave this while statement, which means that we weren't, are not going to print that uh, invalid answer. So let's do C, invalid answer, enter another answer. I, invalid answer, enter another answer. So let's do lowercase n, okay, capital N, you answered N. So when I entered the capital N, it left this while loop and then printed our answer. Okay, so I hope that was helpful some way. You can kind of see how this step would be uh, valuable for you if you're uh, trying to get a correct answer. This way you don't have to, you don't screw up your program or your user doesn't screw up their, your program by accident. All right. Thanks, guys.